In this example, we're trying to make a couple of different diol products starting with an alkene. In both cases we have 1,2 diols. Really the only difference is the stereochemistry. So in this first example our relationship between the two alcohols is syn. In our second example the relationship is anti. So we're going to need to use different reaction conditions in order to control the stereochemistry to give the desired products what we want. The first example is pretty easy. When you want a syndiol, you just need to do a dihydroxylation. So what we'll use for this case is osmium tetraoxide, OSO4, and hydrogen peroxide. And basically this osmium tetraoxide is just a catalyst and as it gets used um, it gets reoxidized by the hydrogen peroxide and regenerated. So essentially how this is occurring if we have our alkene and then we have the osmium tetraoxide which is just an osmium with four double bonded oxygens to it Okay, the way you can think about this happening is this osmium tetraoxide is going to come from either the top side or the bottom side of this alkene. For this example, we'll just think of it as coming from the top. And we can kind of show the electrons like this. The two electrons between the osmium and oxygen will attack here. That will push these two electrons in the pi bond up to this oxygen and then we'll push two electrons between the oxygen and osmium over onto the osmium. So we're going to end up with a bond to this oxygen and a bond to this oxygen. So what we end up with is our five-membered ring with both of these carbons bonded to an oxygen. Both of these oxygens are still bonded to the osmium and then this osmium has two other C double bond or two other double bond oxygens to it. From there now we can take advantage of the hydrogen peroxide. So in the presence of the hydrogen peroxide this gets converted to the diol and then as this osmium comes off it gets reoxidized back to osmium tetraoxide to continue this reaction cycle. In the second example we're going to need to do um, a couple of steps in order to convert this alkene to the anti-diol. There's a couple different ways we could go about this, but probably the best way is to just start with an epoxidation. So we can treat this alkene with MCPBA to epoxidize it. Remember that the MCPBA comes in from either the top or bottom side of the alkene. I'll do it coming from the top to get our epoxide pointing out like this. Now we need to install our second oxygen and from here we can just do an SN2 type process. If we treat that with hydroxide then this will attack the carbon containing the epoxide opening that up and remember if this epoxide which is pointing out is essentially our leaving group here our nucleophile is going to come in from the back side so this new OH is going to be pointing back so 
So I end up on this carbon with an OH pointing back. On this carbon above, I have an O. And since I pushed these two electrons up onto this oxygen, I get an O minus. So now I have the two oxygens anti like I want them, except this oxygen um, still has a negative charge, so we need to get that to the alcohol. So in order to do that, we can just treat this um, with just a little bit of acid, some dilute acid, just to protonate that alcohol to give us the product.